Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We the grateful are. I lift my hand. So come and let me sing. Proclaim the words in the way. We the grateful are of God. We the grateful are. I lift my hand. Come and lift your hands to Jesus. What lay in the Lord? We the grateful Lord. We the grateful Lord, oh God. We the grateful Lord. We lift eyes to you.
Miracles are happening everywhere. Miracles are happening everywhere. Miracles are happening everywhere in your name. Miracles are happening everywhere in your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Kora bashanda la basikiri amragadash. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, welcome somebody on your right and your left as you take your seats. Praise his holy name. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Leave her the bush to Bakarabashanda Labai. A carabasasta Bakurabashta Labagredezi. Ege Bosso Korabashanda Labasikiria. Braca Trabos if a kid a bosses to Bakurabashanda. Amen. Okay. We will be. We We'll be continuing from where we stopped last week on marriage matters. Hallelujah. Well, what's the purpose of this? It's to enhance our marriage experience for those of us who are married. And also to prepare our hearts and our minds for those who still intend to get married. And also for those who don't plan to get married, amen, you can also be good counselors and um, for people, to people around you who desire to get married or are married. After all, Paul wasn't married, Jesus wasn't married. And both of them are the greatest marriage counselors in the Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. I started counseling people about marriage when, from when I was a teenager, my late teens. You know, and uh, so, and um, they were godly counsels. <laughs> Praise God. When you know the word, the word of God applied uh, Everywhere, any situation, it will work. Amen. It's the application of the word of God. The word of God is what guides our marriage. So quickly, let's look at First Peter chapter 3. So we want to look at, uh, last week we began to look at Peter's uh, marriage council. Okay. Peter's marriage council from 1 Peter chapter 3. Peter's marriage council, first he began with the women, with the woman rather, he said, or with wives. He said, as a, as a wife, be a good husband, or sorry, be a good wife. <laughs> be a good wife to your husband. Okay? And then he, he tells us what he means by being a good wife. Uh, King James Version says, be in subjection to your own husbands. Okay? And I, I remember asking last week that, what picture does that give to you? You know, in our modern day, uh, the modern day usage of that word, be in subjection, you know, seems to give an idea of, gives, seems to give a picture of being, uh, being subjugated. Being uh, 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 
in being slave, slavish, being in the being uh, uh, being, being the footmats, you know. But that's not what the scripture means. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because in Christ Jesus there is neither male nor female, but the new creation. That's what Paul says. So he's, we said it means to be responsive to their needs. You want to be a, a successful wife. Be responsive to your husband's needs. And we also saw that um, without, with your, with, with, uh, beyond rather, your outward appearance, what will eventually appeal to a husband beyond the outward ad appearance, good looking, you know, disposition, uh, everything uh, in his rightful place, Know that beyond that, a woman of a godly character who fears God, who reverences her husband, okay, who has inner beauty, who is gentle, gracious, and kind, that's the one that God delights in. Amen. He says, when a woman that has that kind of packaging, praise the Lord will always endear herself to her husband. So, in verse 7, he now says, uh, the same goes for you husbands. The same goes for you husbands. I, I teed off uh, last week emphasizing the place of faith. Obeying God's word from the position of faith. We act, faith is believing God's word and acting on it. Irrespective of what you see. Faith is believing God's word and acting on it. I got counseling, I got I, 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 I was involved in a counseling session with uh, a couple that live abroad. And so we did the counseling session via uh, WhatsApp group call. And I was telling him, I said, do you believe God's word? He said, oh, my wife is this, my wife is that, my wife is... I said, do you believe God's word? You have to believe God's word. You are a believer. Okay? God's word, uh, you've got to get to a place where you've got to believe. Can you give me some more sound here, please? I'm finding it difficult to hear myself. Thank you. You've got to get to a place where you believe the word of God is true and that when you act on it okay you will get the results the word of god promises and in marriage it's got to be applied and i am going to do god's word irrespective of what my spouse is doing if my spouse is not obeying God's word, if I obey God's word, I believe that God's word will bring the results. First Peter chapter 3. Let's read the King James Version. Verse 1. And verse 1. First Peter 3 verse 1. Likewise, wives, be in subjection to your husband, and if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be worn by the lifestyle of the wives. So the word of God says, uh, when I obey God's word, even when my spouse is now, is not, is not necessarily talking about unbelievers and an unbeliever spouse alone here. Okay? 
uh, you can have a believer spouse who is not acting out his nature. But the word of God says when we obey God's word that they will be one. If you don't believe that, you can't get that result. You've got to believe it. Faith is believing the word and acting on God's word. So you are not just acting just to be a good wife. You are deliberate or a good husband. You are deliberately putting out your faith, acting on God's word with a clear cut uh, a, a, a picture of what to expect as a result. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. So when the word of God says, you should walk in love towards your spouse, say, I'm going to walk in love towards my spouse, and this is what the word of God says. God's word says, love never fails. And therefore, this marriage will not fail because I walk in love. Not that you are, you are just carrying out carrying it out as a moral duty the christian has is is deliberate with his faith just like you 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 maybe the lord you know impresses it on your heart that you should give or sow like we usually say in christian parlance you know you sow a seed okay now, you don't just say, okay, maybe you, 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 I want to sow a seed of 20,000. You don't just throw the money in the, in, into the offering. Yes, if you throw the money into the offering, amen, church will use it. But your faith that you are honoring God and honoring his word, okay, your faith has got to back what you're doing for you to be able to get the results. So he says, in verse 7, now, he says, the same goes for you husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. Be a good husband to your wife. And he, he, he goes ahead to describe what he means by being a good husband. Is it possible for you to be a good husband? Yes. Should you be a good husband? Yes. Glory to God. Unconditionally. You don't say, I'm going to be a good husband if she's a good wife. That's not what the word says. The word says, be a good husband. Hallelujah. How does he mean? Oh. He says, honor them. So to be a good husband is to honor your wife. What does it mean to honor? The dictionary says it means to regard. It means to give them approval or distinction. It means to show respect towards your wife. He says you should respect them. It says you should regard them. It says you should honor. You should. <coughs> excuse me. It says you should you should show to them they are distinct. You know, in our marriage vows, we say forsaking all others, which means that she's one. Out of everybody. She's a special one out of everyone. No one is like you. I remember saying that to the person I was counseling. The person said, ah, that was going to be difficult. <laughs> because the wife didn't, for him, at the time, the wife didn't cut that picture. Hallelujah. But you see, like I said, we are acting God's word in faith. The Bible talks about Abraham. Don't miss your body meeting today. It's going to be an awesome one. The Bible says, 
that Abraham did not, he called, he said he was like God who calls things that are not as though they were. So if your spouse is not acting it, he says that you, this is how you do, this is how you get her to, him or her to act it. He says you call things that are not as though they were. So if you, if if your if your your wife if the wife it does not deserve honor you give the honor in spite of it, hallelujah. He didn't give the condition for honoring them. He said, "Be a good husband." What does a good husband do? A good husband honors the wife. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. She's a very terrible one. Ah, she's a very terrible one. So I told the guy, I said, you, are, you have been saying this, and that's what you have been receiving. You will have what you say. If you say your wife is a terrible wife, you will, that's what you will have. Ah, she's terrible. You said it. Don't you remember? Jesus, he said, he gave himself and cleansed it with the washing of the water by the word, Ephesians chapter 5. So we can cleanse our wives with the washing of water by the word. You can, as a, a good husband, calls the wife what he wants her to be, not what she is presently manifesting. If what she's manifesting is not your desire, call her what you want her to be. That is what Jesus does for us. He never changes his mind that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, even when we misbehave. Even when we don't look like it. You know, there are some Christians that are, that are, that are like unbelievers, carnal Christians, sense ruled. But it still does not remove the fact that they are enriched in all trance and in knowledge. Amen. That they are the sons of God. Praise God. God doesn't say, if you are my son if you misbehave well. Once you stop misbehaving, once you stop behaving well, you are no longer my son. He doesn't change. The status doesn't change. Glory to God. Instead, what does he do? He begins to wash us through using his word. Hallelujah. Be a good husband. A good husband is a cultivator. Man, the role of a man in a home, you are a cultivator. Cultivate your wife. Are you listening to me? What does the Bible call the husband, you know, he, uh, uh, the farmer in the scripture? He calls him the husband man. The husbandman, that's a farmer, the cultivator. That is, that's the role, that is what you have been endowed with as a man, to cultivate. So I said, ah. so there are some lands that are not cultivated, that, that, that cannot be cultivated. Let God decide that one. Praise God. I was listening to Joyce Meyer, you know, and Dave, the husband. He said the first few few years of their lives was really was 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 very tumultuous because she came she said she came from an abused home her father abused her her father not only abused her but her mother left her not, not only her mother uh, her mother something else i mean he came she came from a dysfunctional background and she said she did not know that she even had problems she thought her husband was a problem she thought everybody around her was a problem she thought that it was in, what she was in was normal. Hallelujah. She said a few weeks into their marriage, <laughs> a few weeks into their marriage, the husband had to tell her, I said, what's the matter with you? <laughs> she was like, hey, what's the matter? There's nothing wrong with me. But you know what? He patiently cultivated her. Glory to God. He said, he patiently, he said, oh, my husband, oh, he was so patient with me. 
patiently cultivated her. Hallelujah. So who is a good husband? A good husband is one that honors the wife. Not only in private. When you want to get down to business. Hallelujah. But even in public, most especially outside. How much do you talk about your spouse? How much do you talk about her? Someone says, I, I can hardly find any good thing in my wife. So why did you marry her? You obviously was the dull man that you couldn't decipher. You couldn't see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honor her. Regard her. What else does he say? Glory to God. First Peter chapter 3. Verse. We are reading the message translation. He says, honor them. Delight in them. Delight in them. Delight in them. Glory to God. Delight in them. He said, as women, they lack some of your advantages. But in the new life of God's grace, you are equals. Treat your wives then as equals. So your prayers don't run aground. No, I thought the Bible says that I'm the head. Yes, it says, yes, both of you are equals when it comes to the grace of life. For remember, in Christ Jesus, there is neither male nor female. He said, we are all new creations. You are not a higher new creation as a husband. And therefore, we must respect that. That this is, I tell people, I said, you are marrying her. She is first a sister. Before she is your wife. And so that relationship as new creations must be respected. This is a new creation, one that Christ died for. One that the blood of Christ runs through her. One that is a child, is as much a child of God as I am. So God has placed her in my care. And therefore, we must see it as a, as, the, uh, as a responsibility to take care of God's own property. Hallelujah. He says you should delight in them. And wives, let me say this. Uh, make your husband delight in you. Yeah. Make your man delight in you. Does he long to come home to meet with you? Or he wants to cool off outside before coming home? If a man has to cool off outside before coming home, it means that the wife, amen, is not fulfilling her purpose. But lo and behold, I have found myself in such a situation. What will I do? Practice the word. Act the word. Someone say, but that means I will be pretending. No, it's not pretense. Faith that calls things that be not as though they were is not pretense. Abraham was not pretending all the while that he was calling himself Abraham. What was he doing? He was walking God's word. See, he was walking a principle. And principles of God's word work. If we dare to stay. See, if we dare to stay on it. Listen, faith does not mean, like Brother Hagin would say, he said, payday may not come on every Saturday in the U.S. They, they pay weekly. You know, they used to. I don't know where they still do now. You know, payday does not always come every Saturday, but payday will always come. What does that mean? That when you stay on God's word, you may not see the result the next day, but you will definitely see the result eventually. Hallelujah. 
So when you say, Father, I am acting on your word. My wife does not deserve this. But you know what? I am acting on your word and I call her deserving. I'm going to act in love. I'm going to walk in love towards her. Praise God. I'm going to honor her. It may look as if you are pretending. See, your head is just, it's just like what we, what we say when we say that, uh, what we mean when we say that your, you, you may faith, you may have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. As long as it is not voiced out, right? It will never, it can't negate what the faith that you have in your heart. Glory to God. Glory to God. So he says you should delight in them. Let's see the amplified version. Let's go ahead. Let's see the amplified version. Uh, the amplified version uh, of that scripture, amplified classic. I want to bring out something there. He says, Thank you, Lord. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. He says, In the same way, you married men should live considerably. Live considerably. No, no. I think it's the New Living Translation. Let's check the New Living Translation. We'll get something there. Okay. First Peter chapter. Yep, 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 yep. That's it. In the same way, you husband must give honor to your wife. Treat your wives with understanding. Treat them with understanding. The amplifier says that you should live in an understanding way with them. With great gentleness and tact. With an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. Remember, Hebrews chapter 13 tells us that marriage, we must honor the institution of marriage. So it says you treat them with understanding as you live together. Amen. Oh, was talking with someone during the week and, and you could see that this person was trying to dwell with understanding. You know, sometimes we, we may need to give excuses for our, for our spouses. Not because, not because they deserve it, but because we want to walk in love. And the Bible says that when you do this, you are obeying God. And God will make it up for you. I had a man of God. I knew a man of God. After the Lord called him into ministry, he was a very successful businessman. And, and the Lord called him into ministry. The wife, was, the wife got angry. And the wife left Nigeria. Began to live in London. And this man of God was there. He, back here in Nigeria. Doing the ministry. You know. Tried, pleaded with her, you know, entreated her and all that, you know. But the lady did not yield. Herself and her children relocated, said, no, oh, I'm not doing ministry. That's not, I, I, I didn't marry a minister. You know, you know, those, those things, you know. And, but you know what? This man of God, I know this man of God personally, okay? So I'm not saying, this, I, I, he, 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 he said he just stood on God's word. He said he would go there, visit, talk with her, you know, just acted normally. But he was acting on God's word. Praise God. Some years down the line, I'm talking about six, seven years, down the line, she eventually yielded. Amen. God's word came to pass. So now, today they are together. They have branches of their churches in several places. And she's actively involved in the ministry. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on your spouse. You know, we find it easier to make excuses for our children than for our spouses. The Bible said the two shall become what? One flesh. He said, treat her as you should. Do you know that 
inherently as every believer every believing husband knows how he should treat his wife he said treat her as you should and your prayers he said your prayers or else your prayers he said if you don't treat her as you should your prayers will not be heard so which means that glory to god glory to god how precious is your prayer to you if if my prayers will be hindered because of the way i treat my wife hallelujah i'd rather treat her well i'm telling you which one is costlier your prayer heaven being shot on you heaven being shot over you I say, uh, heaven, I mean, i'm a new creation in fact I mean, uh, okay sit down there you're a new creation I see Peter, didn't he, was it not Peter that wrote First Peter chapter 2, verse 9? Huh? You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people, to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous life. Now he's giving an instruction, he are saying you are a new creation, as if you know more than him. Glory to God. We are reaping a harvest of good husbands here. Amen. Ones that will love their, life, their wives treat them well honor them regard them respect them praise god no I say yeah, they are women yeah, they are not be women women ordinary women no you are new creations fellow heirs of the same grace of life together hallelujah and very importantly heavens must not be shot over you treat your wife well it's better not to marry right than for you to be married and have heaven shot over you praise god does that bless you this morning father we give you glory and praise thank you for the entrance of your word gives light we are simple hearted and we receive understanding thank you for great harvest of wonderful marriages in the name of jesus thank you for healings for those that are troubled thank you father even for those of us I want to make a go at a second chance. Lord, we'll hit it right in the name of Jesus. For those who are planning to get married, thank you for wisdom to be able to run a wonderful hope well in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue next week. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am created for praise. I don't think he heard you. Say it again. I am created for praise. This morning we're going to bless the name of the Lord because that is what we're created to do. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Bless your name. And I was created for praise. From the dust of the earth to your breath in me, I was created. Bless your name, bless your name. Bless your name. See, I was, yeah. I was created for praise. From the dust of the earth, of the earth to your breath in me, I was, yeah. I was created. One more time. Bless your name, bless your name. Sing I was here yeah. I was created for praise. From the dust, dust of the, the earth to your breath in me, I was created. Early in the morning, I'll seek your face, oh God. In the middle of the day, I will seek your face, my King. Even in the evening, I will seek your face, my God. Yes. For the rest of my days, Lord, I seek your face. I was here. I was created for praise. 
you guys thanks for blessing us praise God amen glory to God <sighs> thank you Jesus all right let us pray Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We're grateful for 
another opportunity to receive your word we receive uh, with grace in our hearts let it open up to us in the name of Jesus teach us your ways may our hearts be able to receive it not at the word of not as the word of man but as the word of God in the name of Jesus amen we we'll receive utterance to be able to speak boldly as you would want me to speak to your people yokes are destroyed burdens are lifted there is a way thank you the bible says your the entrance of your word gives light your word is a lamp unto my feet it's a light unto my path let it be so for us O oh god confusion and ignorance is dispelled today your spirit ministers to our hearts in Jesus name amen okay last week Sunday um, in the second service I began to look at uh, building a rewarding prayer life building a rewarding prayer life and um, Praise God. And we said, emphasized last week, that the most rewarding thing about prayer is that prayer changes you. Prayer should not just affect things around you, but primarily prayer should affect you the most. Prayer is interaction with God and you can't interact with God and not be affected positively. And your life not be, will not be uh, 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 the better for it. Hallelujah. So, but let's delve in a little. Look at the life of Jesus. Jesus being our example. Jesus was a man of prayer. When Jesus operated on earth... He didn't operate as God on earth. Even though he was God. Philippians chapter 2 said, tells us that he put it aside. Okay? He put his deity aside when he walked upon earth. As God, God does not depend on any man. But as man, Jesus had to depend on on the people on people jesus was limited on earth now jesus is everywhere by virtue of his spirit but right now but then he operated as a man anointed of god acts 10 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth so jesus that's why the Bible calls him our chief shepherd. He says that he was not oblivious of, he's not oblivious of our pains. He, he's, able to, he's able to identify with where we are. Okay? Because he himself likewise partook of the same. He faced the challenges that you and I face. The challenges of men, of man, they are practically the same from generation to generation. Amen. So, well, he didn't have technology then. The challenge that you have with technology came in another form in his time. Glory to God. But the Bible makes us to understand that Jesus, he was a man of prayer. When Jesus was going to be baptized, Luke chapter 3, verse 21, prompt us, please, you're going to be very fast with me. At his baptism, Luke chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible tells us that Jesus, he, he prayed. He was going up to be baptized. He said, Jesus also being baptized and praying. 
Jesus also being baptized and praying. I mean, he was going to be baptized. And the Bible says he was praying. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. Quickly, Luke 5, verse 16. And Jesus, verse 15, give me verse 15 first. After Jesus had a great crusade, he had a people, many people were healed. You know, many people heard the word. The next verse, the Bible tells us that Jesus, after that great exploit, he didn't go and cool off somewhere. He didn't go and, oh, let me start celebrating. Oh, what a great crusade it was. The Bible says, what did he do? He withdrew himself. And there he did what he prayed. After a great exploit. Amen. Someone says that sometimes the time that we are at our we are at our weakest in that sense when we are celebrating our success. The devil is never tired. He never stops. The forces of darkness, they don't stop. When you are celebrating that success, don't just stop at that celebration. Don't just rest on your own hands. Who want to them who are at ease in Zion? What did Jesus do? He withdrew himself. When men were still praising him and, you know, you know uh, uh, sending their thanks, you know, celebrating what is done in their lives, what did he do? He withdrew himself into the wilderness and there he prayed. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. He says, a great while before day, Jesus, he withdrew himself. He went, he rose up and went to a solitary place. Mark 1, 35. Went to a solitary place and there he prayed. So before, in the morning, before stepping out for the exploits, before stepping out to do the things that he needed to do for the day, the Bible says Jesus had an activity, something that he always did. He withdrew himself and he went to pray to generate power for the day, to sort out issues, to win the victories in prayer before the battles are faced. Friends, there is no alternative to prayer. Did you hear what I said? There is no alternative to prayer. Let me say it again. There is no alternative to prayer. Do you know? Someone says, well, I'm a word man. I mean, I'm full of the word of God. Oh, I mean, I've got the word in me. Listen, do you know that God will trust a man of prayer more than a man of the word? Men that God trusted, have, men that God has, over, over, the, over the ages, men that God has trusted and trusted great things to, into their hands and, 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 and have moved great things for God. They were all men of prayer. Peter didn't know much word as Paul. Hallelujah. Because Peter told us himself that there were some things that Paul shared that were even very you know, challenging for them to understand. But they were men of prayer. He was a man of prayer. Acts chapter 3, we see it. The Bible said that in the night hour of prayer, they, they went to where? They were going to the temple to pray at the hour of prayer. And that was where they saw the man by the beautiful gate. And uh, the power of God was manifested. He was a man of prayer. At that time, they had not even preached to any Gentile. They had not even fulfilled all that Jesus Christ had told them to do. Hallelujah. God will entrust things to a man of prayer. 
much more than a man of the word. But a man of the word should be a man of prayer. You can't be full of the word and not be a man of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 We also see severally. I mean, before Jesus walked on water, the Bible tells us, records that he prayed. Matthew chapter 14, quickly. Matthew chapter 14. When Jesus, after that mighty miracles that Jesus Christ did, you know, where he, 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 he fed people, the Bible says that what happened to them? He said they should go, right? He said, let's go over to the other, uh, verse 23. He says, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to a mountain. He had told them, in verse 22, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the winds was contrary and in the fourth watch of the night Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. What preceded it? Time of prayer. I said, oh, we are full of the power of God. Oh, I'm full of the power of God. I'm full of the power of God. I'm full of that. I mean, we just go, we just go there and display. No, <laughs> don't fool yourself. Men that display are men of prayer. Men that do exploits are men of prayer. Daniel said it. He said, he said uh, those that know their God, they will be strong and they shall what? Do exploit. But what was Daniel? Daniel was a man of prayer. Daniel chapter 6 records that he had this prayer chamber. And he said he went there even after the decree of the, of the, of the king that nobody should pray to any other God except to him. He went there. In fact, it's after it was signed, the Bible said he went to his chambers, to, the, to his upper room, and there he opened the windows. He said, as like other times. And there he prayed. No wonder he could do exploits. Hallelujah. Just knowing who you are in Christ is not enough. Did you hear me? Just knowing who you are in Christ is not enough. When you know who you are in Christ, then you go to prayer. Because, listen to me, we live in a world where the forces of darkness don't want you to succeed. They don't want you to succeed. The devil does not want, he doesn't like you to smile. The devil does not want your success. He doesn't, he's against you. The Bible calls him your adversary. He's against you. He will forever be against you. And Jesus knew that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Glory to God. Well, let's check chapter 6 first. Some instructions that Jesus gave. Building a, we're talking about building a rewarding prayer life. Matthew chapter 6. He said in verse 6, When you pray, enter into your closets. One thing I have discovered about studying men of prayer of old was that, was that they had a place. My mother calls it your secret place. They had a place where they prayed. You know, you find us and say, oh, well, we can pray anywhere, you know. We can, we can pray anywhere. I mean, we are, we, yes, there's a place of, you can pray everywhere. You can pray everywhere and anywhere. True. But then, let's begin to have a dedicated place. Jesus had it. And if Jesus, our Savior, had it, then we should have it. Where is your dedicated place where you meet with God? Where is your dedicated place where you meet with God? 
Is it in your room? I remember when we were on campus. Oh, we, people, had, people, people had different corners, different places. Where they, I, I, had, I, I remember one brother, Brother Matthew, very tall Brother Matthew. Remember D.I.? Remember Matthew? Well, is it Matthew or Isaac? That brother that prays in, uh, what's that place where we do fellowship? Uh, Central Calf. Central Calf. He had the place. 5.30 in the morning, you will hear that brother. His, his tongue was, was very, very unique. 5.30 in the morning, that brother, you will hear that brother. If you are passing in front of Central Calf, uh, Belo Hall, you will hear that brother. He had one corner. A man of prayer. Glory to God. If your own, where is your own secret place? Where you meet with your father. Listen, what, what's the purpose of it? It helps you to be organized. It helps you to be focused. You plan for that your secret place. Amen. Jesus. Jesus will go to the... Is it that Jesus didn't have a house? Yes, Jesus had a house. But the Bible says he will go to the mountains. Not because that's where God will answer. But for his sake. He, 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 he needed a place where he... The Bible says he went to a solitary place. And there he prayed. He says, oh, I live in a very, very... In a very, very uh, noisy area. In a noisy place. The Bible says, a great while before day. A great while before day. A great while before day. You must factor it as part of your day. Your prayer life should not be haphazard. Today you pray, tomorrow you don't. Next morning, it is when you are going on the road. Three days after, four days after, it is when it's inside your bathroom. It doesn't afford dedication. The Bible says, at the hour of prayer, the disciples, Paul, Peter, and, Peter and John, they went up to the temple to pray. Bible tells us before the Holy Ghost came, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem. And what happened? He said they were at the upper room. There was a dedicated place. Find one. Tell your neighbor, find one. I live in a one-room apartment. It doesn't matter. That place is enough. If it is, if it is, if it is not your own, find somewhere in your area. Listen. Your prayer life is too important for you to use the excuse of no place. If you don't have him, if you have to travel to church, come, come to church. Pray at your dedicated time of prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 7, look at verse 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. He says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them on their, under their feet and turn again and rend you. Verse 7 now begins to talk about prayer. He said, don't give... Oh, leave right there, bosh the pahaya. He said, don't give that which is holy. Listen, your, the, your time with God is a holy time. He said, don't give it to dogs. Don't give it to those that will, appre that will not appreciate it. Your boss will never appreciate it. Oh, my work is very important. My work is very, my work is very important. Listen, you, 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 you can't plan your life around your work and leave prayer outside. You become a weak Christian. No one says, well, I don't believe in that phrase. When it says a prayerless Christian is a, weak, is a powerless Christian. Ah, uh, uh, we have all power because you live inside of me. Come on, shut up your mouth. You don't know what you are saying. 
I can see how strong you are. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Let's say it together. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Translation. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. <laughs> he said, don't give it to dogs. He said, what will they do? They will trample it on their foot. And what will, they happen? what will happen? He said, they will come back and rend you. They will come back and rend you. A prayerless church is a powerless church. We want to see more raw power in our church. We've got to pray more. We want to see more raw power in our church. See, where we are is a by virtue of what we have done in the place of prayer. Where you are as a Christian is, by, is, a, is a result of what you have done on in the place of prayer. Take it or leave it. It's the truth. In this world. Hallelujah. Men are seeking for power everywhere. But we've got him resident on the inside of us. But you see we have got to cooperate with heaven. To bring that power to bear upon the earth. Men are looking for those who are going to pray for them. No. You've got to do it by yourself. Look at what he says. He said therefore I Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock. Praise God. And the door will be opened to you. Why do we pray? Because we want things to be given to us. We want things to be given to us. Number two, we pray because we want to find answers. It says, it says seek and you will find. Are you looking for answers? Pray! If you don't pray, you won't find the answers. Hallelujah. A friend of mine was ministering. Called out somebody. And he said, well, uh, something happened to you. I said, so, 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 yeah. You have a friend who is called Joseph. Where is he? He said, he's in Canada. He said, oh, that Joseph. The father used to be a herbalist. He was, I mean, the stepfather, he said, oh, he said, yeah, the stepfather was a herbalist. He said something happened in 1999. You went, he took you to his, to, his, to his father, and then his father laid hands on you. That used to be a very, very brilliant person. Used to be very brilliant, you know. But after that incident, uh, things, your academics went down. Where is that your friend now? He's in Canada. He's doing his PhD. He said, yes. He said, he said his, father, his father laid hands on you and uh, laid hands on him and trans. Listen, I'm not, I didn't say that to scare you. I'm telling you that, see, men, that we live in a wicked world, you have got to be alert. You have got to be at alert. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26 verse 38 he said we should watch and pray be alert so a, your prayer life makes you to be spiritually at alert things are happening around us in our family I mean the devil is messing up things and we are just keeping quiet why because we don't know how to pray We want things to open up to us. That's why he said, he said, knock. He saw the door will be opened. Those ones are various metaphors of, uh, of prayer that Jesus said. He, he said, ask, you shall be given. He said, seek, you will find. Knock, the door shall be opened. It's a definite statement. So if someone says, uh, I, I, I knocked uh, and, I, and, and the door was not open, is you, what do you do? You keep knocking. I've been praying, 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 praying. I've not found. Keep, find, keep, keep praying. Hallelujah. Pastor, what is the secret? What else can I do? Said, you, do what, what do you do? Keep praying. Pray again. Pray again. Pray again. Go and pray again. Go and what? Pray again. 
Elijah, he called his servant. And when he said, there shall be rain. He, the word had already come out. There shall be rain. But do you know that if Elijah had not taken the next step that he took, right, the word would have just gone and, uh, 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 and nothing would have happened. After he spoke to the, to the spoke the word, no, there's a, I hear the sound of abundance of he 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 oh there's, uh, he, he, there, there, there was going to be rain. James now tells us that this was his secret. Elijah went to pray. He said there was a man of like passion like us, and he prayed. And we see that he went to the mountain and began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. After a while, he would. It's not. It was not shuka shuka one minute prayer. He prayed. He told the servant, "Go, go and just, check and the servant checked i saw no i, I can't I, I can't observe anything i can't see anything he said he went back to do what he went back and prayed told him well, go back again ah i can't see anything and he repeated that seven times seven times seven times at the seventh time now one said ah i see a hand like like that like the like, like, like the hand of a man he said yes oh yeah wrong go and tell ahab he didn't give up. Why? Because Jesus said, he said, ask and you shall. Shall is the greatest, is the most, is the most powerful definitive word that this thing, it will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why, look at, he said, he said, he, he, he said to us in Ephesians chapter 6, look at it, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit that whereunto and there watch and watching thereunto with all perseverance all perseverance all perseverance what is all perseverance all perseverance brother Higgin talked about how the Lord led him to pray for three and a half years for the healing revival to break out in his time. He said, prayed for three and a half years. He was there. Praying, 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 praying. Why? Because he says that, see, you will break until you get to a, you, you, until you get to a watershed. Something will break. That's the tenacity with which he wants us to do it. He said, ask. He said, you will. Be given. Look at verse 8. Am I saying something here this morning? He said, and everyone that asked Oh, let's forget the bush to Mahaya. And the bush to Mahaya. Everyone that asked receive it. The word receive there is the word lambano in the Greek. It means to take it's a it's a it's an active thing it's not a passive thing right that word is not passive it's something you do it's like when you go to the atm prayer is like when you go to the atm when you go to the atm right do you just look at the atm and expect money to come no it's your money god has already given in Christ Jesus, we have it. But we have got to lambano it. Like when we get to the ATM, you will have to do, carry out some activities. Amen. Press the button. Slot, I mean, slot in your card. If it is your, what do you call it? Uh, what, um, and press the, the, the pin. Press your pin or use your finger, whichever way it is. Uh, and then uh, you, you, you activate the stuff to bring out the exact amount of money you want. Uh, and do you know what? You don't just put the something there, press the whole thing, uh, and the something is uh, uh, counting your money, and then you walk away. expecting to receive that's not the kind of receiving we are talking about hallelujah we are talking about one that you what you will take god is saying come and take anyone that asks it takes so the challenge is not with god giving the challenge is with you and i what taking it's mine we have i'm in the first, you need to listen to the first service message Oh, glory to God. Praying forward. I mean, I mean, determining what will happen to your future generations. Our parents didn't know it. We know it now. 
And so our children must be the better for it. Praying forward. Praying forward. Taking the future. The Bible says the violence is what that, does, that takes it by force. Someone says, I, I've been doing it for, I've been praying this thing for the past three years. Keep praying. I've not seen the results. Keep praying. Oh, my marriage is in disarray. Keep praying. Glory to God. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 7. So prayer is not passive. No, 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 no. When you do not pray, you know what will happen to you? You will get tired. When you don't pray, you will get frustrated. When you don't pray, you will start carrying, using worldly means. When we, see, glory to God. Thank God for the place of thinking. Right? When the situations in your life, uh, right, cause you to do more thinking than praying, you have missed it. It should drive you to the place of prayer. Yes, yeah, you know, see, oh, glory to God. And God, there's a place of strategy. But you see, we, there is, we are supernatural people. We are supernatural people. Yes, there's a place of strategy. There's a place of, you know, there are some times when strategy will fail. I like the attitude of my wife's uncle, given, she gave, gave, who gave a story, you know, who said that, well, he's, uh, I mean, he, he, that their lineage, he, he felt that there was a cause, blah, 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 you know, and things like that, and, and, and things like that. And, and he said, the, I remember he told me, he said he went, he went to a mountain to, to pray. 40 days he was there. I say, uh, uh, 40 days he was there. He said, he said, he, he, was not, he, he was not ready to live there until he was sure the whole thing had changed. Say, hey, you know, no, he's, you know he's, he doesn't know the word, you know. He, 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 he's because he doesn't know the word. You know, the word has said, I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings uh, in the heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, you know, the word told you that so that you can pray it into your life. Brother Hagin said for six months he was praying the Ephesians prayer until light broke in his heart and the scriptures began to leap out of the, out of the pages and he began to see light again. He was like, ah, you mean this is the Bible I've been reading? What have I been reading since? He said he persevered there. There's a place of perseverance in the place of prayer. Perseverance because you know that the word says when I do when I pray, I will get results. So, if it's either you are lying or God's word is lying, if we don't get the results. But God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. The Bible tells us that Isaac entreated God for his wife. What's the name of that his wife that was barren? Rebecca. Isaac entreated God. What is the meaning of entreaty? He supplicated. He supplicated. Husbands, where, is, where are you in the place of prayer? Wives, where are you in the place of prayer? Isaac did what? Entreated the Lord is God on the behalf of Rebekah, his wife, who was barren, and it opened up. Didn't God promise Abraham? Was the promise not in existence? When he had said, I've made you a father of many nations. He said, through Isaac. He said, uh, your descendants. Uh, I mean, oh, Fregedre, the most Listen, the devil will always fight every word of God. Isaac, God had told, I, told, told he said, through Isaac, your son. He said, I am going, you are, you are, the whole, I mean, I, I'm going to, flood, you are going to have plenty of desc descendants. Through Isaac. And this Isaac was barren. His wife was barren. 
that was a that was an affront, a direct affront on the word of God against God's word. It was as if God's word was not going to come to pass. But the Bible says, a time came, Isaac, he rose up and he entreated the Lord concerning his wife. He did those battles in the place of prayer. He did those battles in the place of prayer. It's time to stand up. It's time to pray. It's time to take your prayer serious. Your prayer life. No shuke, shuke, shuke prayer. Five minutes and you are tired. Stay there. After five minutes you are tired, go back, refresh yourself, come back. I'm staying here. The Bible said Jesus can withdrew himself. Do you have times when you withdraw from the world? You want to have a rewarding prayer life. Have times when you, what? When you, when you escape. When you withdraw from everything. Withdraw from everything. Withdraw from everything. Fast off food. Say fasting is not only about food. Amen. Some of us, we need to fast off television. Some of us, we need to fast off our, 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 uh, our uh, what do you call those? Uh, extracurricular and social media and all that. You remember how much you spent on Facebook? How much time you spent on Facebook last week? Three, four hours. I know that Facebook is very, is very sweet. The way they do it, it's very, very sweet. You just be clicking, you just be rolling, you just be rolling. Ah, you see, ah, you're afraid. I saw this 12, 20 years ago. That's when you click. Ah, okay. Who are you? you have mutual friends. And, and, and before you know it, oh, and then one story. Ah, how about you killed Babangida? And, ah, 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 ah. Uh, Osama bin Laden, hey, hey, how did they kill him? Someone that died that many years ago. What's your own business? Do you want to be a soldier? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then our prayer lives suffer. Someone says, I don't have time. Check, check your calendar very well, your daily routine very well. You will find out that you can actually create time. Are you blessed today? Let's be men of prayer that will bring down the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We must pray because there is no other alternative. It's a sobering truth. Hallelujah. April 2015 or 2016, shortly after the vice president and the president was, you know, came into power, we, I went for a meeting, a, a club that the vice president started many years ago. And he sent a prayer, he sent a request, he sent a message to us at that meeting. He said, please, pray for me. And then, Enelama was the minister of trade. He was the one that he sent. He said, he said, in that place, prayer it is what is what is keeping us. Please keep praying for us. Please keep praying for us. Paul, everywhere he went, he said, pray for us. Hebrews chapter 13, pray for us. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, pray for us. In Hebrews chapter 13, he said, we trust that we even have a good conscience. I want to live honorably before all men. He said, that's what, he said that's what we desire to do, but pray for us. So which means that the, the system can be created in such a way that even though you want to live honorably, right, it frustrates you. What's the antidote? He said, pray for us. Glory to God. Stand to your feet, everybody. Friends, Consecrate yourself to prayer. You know that in the body of Christ today, some people are still some people are still, are still arguing that oh, fasting is not for us now. Lazy people. So no, all things are our yours in Christ. Where are they? Let's see them. In the place of prayer, begin to consecrate yourself to prayer. 
pray to, to, to a prayer life. You can't, you can't have a rewarding prayer life if you are not dedicated to it. It has got to be consistent. We have got to be disciplined about it. Because our God answers prayer. He said, ask. He said, you shall. When you find yourself asking, oh God, where are you? Well, I don't know. I have done everything. And I don't know what is happening. And what else should I do? If you don't, what else should I do? If you are asking that question, what else should I do? I'm giving you answer today. Pray. Engage in fasting and prayer. Prayer strengthens the Christian. I told you last week. Prayer deals with your appetites. You are having challenge. You are have. You are having. You are having challenge. You know, with sexual habits that are that are unhealthy. Go and pray. He said, is any man afflicted? Let him pray. You notice some certain things happening in your family? Don't just be going around to seek for, for advice, to seek for counsel. Oh, what's the counsel? What's the counsel? What's the counsel? Give me counsel. What should I do? The word has told you what to do. Pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, may we be true prayer warriors indeed. Men that will stand until the power of God is brought to bear. Let there be a reawakening of the prayer revival in our hearts. Praying for souls. Praying in your will. Praying your will. If we pray according to your will, the Bible says that you hear us and that you will grant us the petitions that we have desired of you. Oh, may we be perseverant. May we persevere in the place of prayer. Grant us strength. Lord, that, may we have that depth of conviction about prayer. Prayer is a means of power. Prayer is a means of power. We want to have power with you. May we prevail in the place of prayer. Let the weak become strong. Let the feeble knees be strengthened. Let the feeble minds be strengthened. Let the distracted minds, uh, let them be focused again. And cut off all the things, uh, Lord, uh, that are weighing them down. The devil does not want you to pray. Make up your mind today. I'm going to, I'm going to run ahead in the place of prayer. May that be so for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have our seats. God bless you. thank him let's give him praise let's bless his holy name thank you lord jesus father we bless your name thank you for stirring the, the fire of prayer stirring it up in our heart we give you praise and we bless your name amen hallelujah now let's worship the lord with our tithes and our offering as we listen to the following announcements and then if you are you have transferred your tithe to the church account during the week or you want to pay it now so um, may you please rise as we take the tithe prayer together hallelujah say with me heavenly father i profess this day to you that i've come into the inheritance which you sought to give me i'm in the land which you have provided for me in jesus christ the kingdom of almighty god i call upon the name of jesus and you heard my cry and deliver me from the power of darkness 
and translated me into the kingdom of your dear son. And now you have made me your righteousness. Jesus, I bring the first fruits of my income to you and I worship and honor you with them. I rejoice in all the good which you have given to me and my household. I rebuke the devourer concerning my finances and the work of my hands. The angels of God are released on my behalf and cause good to come my way. I declare that I'm blessed. This is my confession of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you. We give you praise for another privilege to give unto you. We acknowledge you as the source of everything that we have and that we have. We worship and we honor you with our tithes and offering. We give in faith. We give in rejoicing. Father, we thank you for our week is blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the instruction of the Spirit that you give unto us. We thank you for we are led even into your week this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for the angelic activities. We thank you for the work tirelessly on our behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus. We give you praise for we increase to the left and to the right this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. Our heart this week is full of thanksgiving and our lips is full of, of, of rejoicing unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, you have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, let's give our tithe and offering as we listen to the following announcement. Uh, after the uh, uh, service today, the Covenant Schools uh, continues. Let's make sure we attend our different classes. And also, today um, is, is our body meeting, so let's make sure we, we appear um, in our different uh, places where the body meeting takes place at the right time that we do. It's going to be a powerful one today as usual, so let's make sure we attend our body meetings today. Let's plan our time and make sure we attend our body meeting. And also, our, week, our midweek service, uh, service also we hold this week, both online and then on-site. Let's also plan our time also to make sure that we partake in the blessing of uh, hearing. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing God's word. So let's make sure we uh, schedule our time to fit in into uh, the uh, time to come together and to listen to God's word. So, and also this Saturday, um, the Honorables Club will have their meeting by 4 uh, p.m. So let the, let the Honorables uh, put that in mind. And also the uh, Lively Stone uh, group, they'll be, they'll be having their meeting this week by 1 p.m. on Saturday on the 18th. By 1 p.m. So by 1 p.m., let them uh, let the uh, let the uh, lively stones uh, group folks put that in mind. Why 1 p.m.? So they're having their meeting this Saturday, and also as we've been announcing to us uh, on the 25th um, that the uh, encounter with grace 10th years anniversary will take place at Abeokuta uh, Rock Foundation Church at Idiaba. Let's also plan. And pray, let's pray and plan to attend uh, the meeting. The Lord bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The following people are celebrating their birthday this week. We have Melissa Porutwa today, 12th. We have Emmanuel Ogunsonwo, 13th. Emmanuel Akman, 13th. Goodness Omokaro, 14th. Dako Thompson, 15th. And then Bolu Watiwi Ideage on the 18th. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If they're in the house or their representative is in the house, can they rise up to their feet as we pray for them? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all these ones. Thank you for all those that are celebrating your birth, their birthdays, oh God. 
Thank you, Father, for you are the giver of life. You are the one that has kept them, sustained them. Lord, made them to see another year of their lives. Father, we are grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for them. We bless them. We bless them, oh God. We bless them, Father, and we declare that they will do good. They will do well in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, because, Lord, their hands will handle what their hearts has imagined in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, because they are blessed with the blessings of heaven in the name of Jesus. Therefore, they prosper in all of their ways in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we declare over their lives, oh God, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. This is their portion and their heritage even in this new year and beyond. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And everybody says, Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Kingsville Church and here we raise successful goodly lights. If you've worshipped with us, maybe this is your second or your third time of worshipping with us. We want to celebrate you. Do we have anyone like that? Who's worship with us second, maybe your second or your third time? There's nobody like that. Okay. Do we have anyone worshiping with us for the very first time? For the very first time. This is your very first time of worshiping with us. Maybe you've been with us online or wherever, but today is your very first time of worshiping with us. Anybody like that? Anybody? Okay. Praise the Lord. Um, please, you guys ready? Um, Pastor Wale Adenuga um, uh, is sent me a video for to play in church to uh, advertise their his um, worship concert that will be coming up next Saturday. Okay, and um, he's inviting you to join online. So just quickly play that. We can hear. Where did the voice go suddenly? Time featuring Matt Redman and Daniel Bassi. It's the fourth edition of the Green Worship Benefit Concert, holding on Saturday, 18th of September at 5 p.m. West African Time, featuring Matt Redman and Daniel Vassi, Noel Robinson, Ethan Nathan, Wale Adenuga, Nosa, Folabi Newell, Evans and Puris Oboi. Performances also from Laolu Benjo, Femi Okunga, David Omojumiju, Angelo and Ore Macaulay, showing on DSTV Channel 262. Go TV channel 102 and also on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram via at Green Worship. To get all the updates first hand, register now at worshipforchange.org forward slash Green Worship. Green Worship is a Worship for Change benefit concert. Okay, so there we have it. Now, um, on the 25th, of, as we have been announcing to us um, uh, in, a, in a Abel Okuta, we will be having a meeting to commemorate the 10th year anniversary of um, Encounters with Grace on Radio. Finally, somebody has gotten me to celebrate an anniversary. And, yeah, you know, and uh, who else who else can move me to do that amen and i'm grateful for it uh, so we are going to be doing that um, we'll be blessing people we are not asking the whole church to come to abelkuta okay we are going to be hosting but as many of you as want to come be a part of it uh, that would be wonderful to be wonderful to have us there um, we have a, a, a budget of about 250000 to host that meeting. Uh, so please, um, if you want to, I know it's impromptu, if you want to give anything towards it, please you can send uh, 
send whatever you want to give towards it uh, to the to the church account okay it will be of immense blessing to us and um, we're trusting god that our radio listeners they will come a number of them have been registering and telling us they are going to be there they're going to be there they're going to be there and we trust god that it will be one that will enrich them enrich their lives the power of god will be present and also please very importantly help us to pray along concerning that meeting pray concerning that meeting it's very 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 important we do so praise the lord let's rise to our feet as we close the meeting uh man a day Somebody say, I will pray. Satan, watch out. It's coming. Who is the prayer man? Amen. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of someone and begin to prophesy into their lives. Speak into their lives. Speak the blessing of God. Speak the blessing of God over their week. Speak the blessing of God over his week. Speak the blessing of God over her week. In the name of Jesus, the favor of God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, pray for them, pray for him. Please, if you don't know the name of the person that you are holding, oh, please ask for the person's name and pray for that person. I pray for my brother, I pray for my sister. Lord, let your hand, O oh God, be mighty upon him, upon her ways, upon his ways this week. Lord, Thank you for victories, uh, for every challenge that comes in the name of Jesus. He hears your voice clearly. She hears your voice clearly. Thank you, Father, for the spirit of obedience, Lord, to your word. Thank you because you are, you are bringing him uh, to uh, his wealthy place. You are bringing her to her wealthy place. We pray for supernatural provisions in the name of Jesus wisdom to be able to navigate uh, through the week in the name of Jesus sound health come on declare sound health over him sound health over her we know health is wealth thank you with long life you satisfy us no debilitating disease comes near you you are far from coronavirus in the name of Jesus for you dwell in the sacred place of the most high you abide under the shadows of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with him. And so we say concerning you, it shall be well with you this week. To be well with you this week, you will eat the fruit of your labors. All the fruit of your labors shall not be found in the house of strangers. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Let's bring our prayers to a close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share together. I am an overcomer. I will keep God's word in my heart to observe and to practice in faith, in love, and in joy. I will live sensitive to the Spirit, thereby making my way prosperous this week and enjoy success as God's light to the glory of my 